It is now time to introduce an inspirational young man, Mr Hayden Stevens. Hayden travels with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. He's 35 years of age. He's also a poet, a filmmaker, an orator and a stand-up comic. He's gained a reputation for inspirational speeches at various events and acts as a mentor and coach to young men with Duchenne. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayden's motto is different, not less, and he aims to spread that message. Which please may welcome Hayden Stevens. So I'd love to do my routine, but it's probably not appropriate, so <laughs> so we'll just stick to a nice inspirational story. Yeah. The Duchenne Foundation have invited me to come talk a little bit about living a good, full, long life with DMD. You've heard all about the kids. Well, this is what the kids become. Last year, I came and spoke about my achievements so far and how I was thriving, living independently in the community. I've never been one to let my condition get in the way of living the life I want to live. I'm now 35 years old and I have a long list of things to be proud of. I, of course, have my troubles. My heart is failing. My lungs are weak. I have a lot of pain and I have to eat through a tube in my stomach. I still can't quite shove the meal at the ball down my tube. <laughs> I tried last year, still can't do it. But I'm still here and I'm happy. I live in my own home and have spent time as a mentor and wheelchair sports coach as well as a public speaker. I've always longed to perform, which is why I love public speaking so much. But I crave something more challenging, the more like the performer I've always wanted to be. So la late last year, I decided that I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Well, a sit-down comedian, <laughs> anyway. It was one of my many goals I've set myself in life. Of course, one has to be realistic about their goals. I wanted to be a used car salesman but people are not too keen for me to take them on the test drive. <laughs> I wanted to be a personal detective, but the wig as a disguise just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> so I thought, okay, lifeguard. I kept getting bogged. <laughs> and I thought, I want to play cricket with Brad Hogg, but I'm not that great at running between wickets. <laughs> Either is he. <laughs> At least he can bowl good. I wanted to do something that able-bodied people do that I can also do, despite my wheelchair. I entered a nationwide stand-up competition called Raw. 1,000 people entered this competition, with the best 15 competing in a national final in Melbourne. I had no thoughts that I could actually make it to Melbourne, but there was one major goal I was desperate to achieve. The state final would be held at His Majesty's Theatre in front of 1,200 people, and I so wanted to be in that state final. I was emailed my heat date and said about writing a five-minute set. My jokes were always going to be about the struggles I have with my disability. I knew I could speak well. The only question I had, was that going to be funny? So there I was, backstage at the Charles Hotel. Moments from my first attempt at making people laugh. I was very cagey, as were the other competitors, who did not expect to see a guy in a wheelchair backstage. I could tell that they were humouring me, letting me do my thing, but not expecting too much from me. When you have a disability, then people see you, they just assume that you can't speak, let alone do a stand-up comedy routine. But I knew that I was so much more than my appearance suggested. So my time came, but I had one hurdle to overcome that the others didn't. I had to get up on this stage with a steep portable ramp. This ramp would play a role later. So they call my name, I drive up the ramp, 
and onto the stage to the shocked reactions of the audience. You could hear a pin drop. The spotlight was shining in my face and all I could see was a dark space. I knew what they were thinking. They were thinking, oh my God, he's in a wheelchair. Ah, oh, that poor guy. Has he not been through enough? Now he's going to get up on stage, try and make us laugh. I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> my heart was racing when a joke I had not written popped into my head right there in front of the microphone. I was nervous, and I'll be honest, the first few words that came out of my mouth started with F. I'm going to tell you what I said. I'm going to edit it, of course. There's children in the room. I said, you should have seen the size of that ramp. People have been saying all day, break a leg. Nearly broke my neck. <laughs> that would have been a tragedy. The audience roared with laughter, and I knew I had them. I went through my routine, got laughs in all the right places, and drove off to a big ovation. The people backstage that started the night standoffish were straight over complimenting me on my set. I had just been accepted into a world where my wheelchair disappeared. I went on to be named one of the winners of my heat and qualified for the semi-final. I was one round away from His Majesty's Theatre. Now I'm going to take a little break tell you a story about my dad. Um, I could have been a straight A student in primary school, but for some reason I kept failing phys ed. <laughs> so I asked my dad about it. He said, son, I've been waiting for this moment. I've got some good news, I've got some bad news. The bad news is you're going to be in a wheelchair the rest of your life. I said, what's the good news? He said, you'll save money on running shoes. <laughs> I said, but Dad, you pay for my running shoes. <laughs> exactly, it's good news for me. <laughs> we had a laugh about everything. My parents always tried to teach me the positives in life. I learned that your disability does not control you. You are in charge. You take out of life all you can. So I'll fast forward to the semi-final. This time people backstage knew I was funny. So it was a different pressure to perform well enough to reach my goal. I killed it again and I won my way into the final. Now, 140 people entered the WA competition and I was in the top 15 in the state and my disability didn't hold me back. When I drove out in front of 1,200 people at His Majesty's Theatre, I had the biggest smile on my face. I had just achieved the goal that I had set myself. I was up there on stage with 14 other people. I was just like them. We were all there as stand-up comedians. We were a job to do. My disability didn't matter. When I heard 1,200 people laugh at my first joke, it was one of the proudest moments in my life. I made sure I looked up to the top deck so I could see what a full theatre, all their laughing with me looked like. I felt on top of the world that Duchenne was not big enough a barrier to be exactly where I dreamed of being. One of the reasons I went on this journey was so I could tell my story to young parents and young kids living with Duchenne. I wanted it to inspire them to dream big and to know that being diagnosed with Duchenne is not the end of life or dreams. And here I am telling you that story. To the parents here tonight, when your child says to you, I have a dream and a goal, think of me before you answer. And I'm going to finish with one more line. It's my favourite joke. You know, 
I haven't always been in this wheelchair. I used to have a blue one. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Put your hands together for Hayden Stevens. Very good again. Very good. Well done, Hayden. Fantastic. Ah, very good, mate. Very good. And if I'm not careful, you'll be standing right here next year running the whole shooting match. And Hoggy will be out as well. We'll move him on. He'll be patron, MC, comedian, a lot. Put your hands together again for the wonderful Hayden Stevens. I love him. Good man. Great story.